What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the best loadout slash build for the Bulwark. One of the better classes instead of Space Marines too. It's actually going to end up being one of the tankier ones, great survivability with it, and a good DPS output. On top of that, utilizing the parry with this system is going to make you one of those aggro tanks that'll try and get into the face of any one of those elites, being able to shred them down, stop them from advancing, and taking them out in pretty swift succession. With that being said, we've got more than a few things to cover with this one, so let's jump straight into it. Starting up first with the secondary weapon, we're going to be going with the plasma pistol. Generally, this is going to be the better option, especially for this build, considering what we need from the plasma pistol is the capability of using that charge shot in order to stop reinforcements being called in from some of those elite units. Sometimes they may be on the other side of the map or just outside of reach before you would be able to get over to them and do that heavy strike to stop them. So with the plasma pistol, just one shot, one full charge shot, we'll be able to take them and stop them from being able to call in for those reinforcements. On top of that, it's going to have fantastic DPS output. It is something that can benefit you in certain situations where you may be facing off with some of those cacodemons, those flying term or tyranid units that are going to be out of reach of our melee. More than likely, you won't be able to get that melee damage in on them. So this is one of those things that can help compensate in that moment and give a little bit of DPS output to help out with the teammates as well as taking these things down. They're pretty much the bane of my existence at this point within the game, for at least this class in specific. And the only other way to counter them is by using the crack grenades or the grenades that basically are the sticky ones that you can throw and just attach to one of them. It only take one of those grenades in order to take each one of them down and sometimes that can come in pretty handy if you've got no grenades left and you find one of those boxes available. Grab those up, it could benefit you later on. And when it comes down to the perks that you'll want to select for the plasma pistol, you want to start off on the bottom row with fast venting, then head over for rampage, killing 10 enemies in rapid succession. You deal 25% more damage for 5 seconds. This is something that can occur quite often, especially if you're using charge shots against some of those elite units and they have some of the smaller units around it. It will have splash damage, or if you're just shooting some of these charge shots into the crowds of some of those smaller units, you can rack up 10 kills pretty quickly with this weapon, especially against something like the Defending Generators mission, probably one of the faster ways to get most of these units down rather than just charging in there with a melee, but it can be pretty useful and you can utilize this Rampage perk to have additional damage output. Right after that, we've got the Supercharged Shot, just giving us even more damage with each one of those charged shots at 10%. Just after that, we've got Great Might, which is going to increase our damage against Terminus level enemies. This would be the boss units. And after that, Plasma Collection, getting a little bit more of that increase to the overall shots that we have by 20%, or shots available. And then after that, Efficient Charge, since we're using charge shots all the time, this is going to basically give us even more charge shots that we can use later on, just using two less energy every single moment. And by the time you've got Mastery to fill this fully out, Retaliation after a perfectly timed dodge, you deal 25% more damage. So in some of those moments where we have to dodge against those red circle moments, which will happen in more than a few moments since we're going to be up in the face of a lot of those Majora's type enemies, this is another moment to capitalize on even more damage output for ourselves and giving us that capability of just taking down those enemies even quicker. And just after that, we've got fast venting. Weapon cools 15% faster. This is going to benefit us even more in certain moments when we're solely using this, especially against Cacodemon, or possibly facing off with some of those boss units, or even against the Chaos enemies. Sometimes you will utilize a combination of the melee with the Plasma Pistol in order to effectively eliminate those enemies as quickly as possible. And since we're using charge shots, we will overheat this weapon quite often, so that faster cooling is going to benefit us in the long run. And one thing to mention as you're leveling, I would always highly suggest picking the plasma pistol that ends up having a larger magazine capacity. That one's going to benefit you more in the long run than having the venting speed as you're just going to have a need for more shots, especially as you go into the harder difficulties rather than actually having this thing cool down faster. And by the end point, you definitely want the Ophelian Liberation. Coming up right after that, when it comes down to the melee weapon, we'll be using the Power Sword for this build. It is going to be extremely powerful for us. It is going to give us the capability of stun locking a lot of those elite units and giving us the capability of knocking back any one of those smaller enemies, forcing them after any one of our light strikes from this while we're in the power style to just fall back and be capable of having a gun strike moment. That way we can get contested health back and armor plates at a very even and efficient rate. Adding to our overall survivability with this build and giving us even more of those capabilities of just constantly getting that health back and getting that armor back in any given moment, especially if we're knee deep in the crowd. 
Now for this build specifically, you are going to want to go for any one of the swords that has fencing as the defense on it. This is going to give us that open opportunity to constantly be able to parry strikes. The whole build is going to be built around those perfect parries, and that is going to benefit us in the long run and give us the maximum amount of survivability as well as DPS output. So when it comes to leveling, always choose the bottom sword, and that is going to be the one with the fencing for you. The speed may not be that great when it comes down to the purple version. You will have to kind of accommodate for that. But once you finally make it into the legendary version, the top right is going to be the better one for you with that 11 strength, the speed all the way up at 7. The cleaving potential is the only thing that is a little bit of the downfall for this. But... For the most part, it's not going to be a huge hindrance for us as we're going to be in the faces of those elites constantly doing area of effect damage from any one of our perfect strikes or our perfect parries. So that's where we're going to get that a little bit of damage going outward and not need so much of that cleaving potential to churn through those crowds. Now when it comes down to the perk, we're going to be starting on the top row. I wish we could start on the bottom, but there's too many of the nodes on the top row that are going to be beneficial for us, and we won't have enough of these mastery points in order to actually fill out the proper list if we started from the bottom row. But with armored strength, when we have full armor, our melee damage is increased by 10%. We can capitalize on this in certain moments, especially if we're utilizing the gun strikes, cons doing these perfect parries all the way into finishers we should be able to maintain full armor pretty regularly especially if we're within our own banner but a lot of times this is just one of those nodes where we need it in order to start the path going forward and right after that mastery of offense after switching sword combat style this is when we hold r1 instead of having a heavy strike immediately we'll be able to switch from speed to power stance and we will always want to go to power stance but if we do switch pretty quickly we will have five seconds of an additional 20 percent more melee damage so so sometimes switching power style can end up benefiting you with a little bit more of that damage for at least five seconds and only a cooldown of 10 seconds. So if you regularly keep this in mind, you can have that additional 20% melee damage up quite often. And just after that, we've just got a 5% increase to our melee damage. And after that, momentum gain each consecutive light attack increases light attack melee damage by 3% up to 30% for 3 seconds. You'll notice this in the top left screen where it'll be this list of skulls and this will indicate to you that you've been constantly stacking this up it won't tell you how much all the way up to that 30 percent that you've actually made or if you're at the maximum but for three seconds as long as you're hitting with those light strikes you'll be constantly churning through that momentum of increasing your overall melee damage output and this works for the speed style and the power style both of them are going to benefit from this as they will have light strikes up until you utilize the heavy attack which is the power rig now, coming up right after that, we've got Fencing Blade, which is going to give us the speed style combo length increase from 4 to 5. I really wish we could go through the bottom route because I use Power Style more often than I use the speed style. It's going to be the reason or it's going to be the style that ends up giving us the capability of stun locking a lot of those elite type enemies. But sadly enough, we still need some of those nodes later on here to give us that damage output that we really need from this. But switching over to speed style to take out some of these smaller units can be pretty beneficial and having that additional strike can go a little bit further as well as just being able to really stack up that momentum. Sometimes it's a good idea to switch over to the speed style, get those strikes in with the light attacks to gain up to that 30%, and then switch back to the power style once you get into the elites after the smaller crowd, and then be able to have that maximum 30% damage output. Now just after that, we've got the Chaos Slayer, which is going to give us more melee damage against the Chaos enemies, and just underneath that, we've got the melee damage towards Tyranid with another 10%, and then pushing forward from that, while performing a light combo, you take 15% less range damage. This is going to give us a little bit more of that tankiness, especially when we've got tons of those ranged enemies firing on us, if we have to really tank or face tank any one of those elite enemies and we've got a lot of those smaller units firing at us this could mean the difference between surviving that moment until the finisher and holding them off from your team but right after that we've also got reeling blow which each enemy hit by a power rake which we'll be throwing this into the combination with our power style consistently after every three strikes you should be holding that r1 for that heavy attack throwing that power rake up into that enemy in front of you and then after you've hit them with that power rake they'll now deal 30% less damage for 4 seconds with a cooldown of 10 seconds on top of that. So this is going to give us an even more survivability while we're face tanking some of those elite units. 
or even extremist units. And just after that, we've got the Majoris Slayer, which this means that any one of those elite units we're facing off with will have an increase of 10% damage towards those enemies. And then just above that, we're going to get that melee damage against terminants level enemies, increasing it by 20%. <clears throat> increasing it by 20%. So this is going to give us more damage towards some of those boss level units. Anytime that you have one of those mini bosses come in or the boss at the end of some of these missions, this is going to be the thing that benefits you. Anytime you see that health bar come up at the top screen, you're going to have an additional 20% on top of the 30% and the other additional percents that we've gained from this in order to deal damage towards those units. So that way we can truly capitalize on our melee in certain moments and try to work in that perfect parry against some of these boss units as it can work out quite well for you, but you're going to have to have that timing proper because it's still going to be dangerous in those moments. And one thing to keep in mind when it comes down to the power sword, I always trip myself up with this as whenever I see one of those units that's trying to reinforce or call for reinforcements and they're just in front of me, I find myself consistently holding R1 in order to try and do that heavy strike, but with the power sword, that is the way that you're going to end up changing your style from speed to power. So you're going to need to at least strike once or at least be sprinting in order to get that heavy strike out as soon as you see that unit in order to stop them from actually calling in those reinforcements. And it's, it's basically... Uh, it's ruined a couple of those moments for me where they've ended up getting the call in for reinforcements just because I ended up changing the style instead of hitting the enemy. So it, do keep that in mind. It can be a little bit frustrating. But if you do remind yourself of that and you don't end up in those problems, you should be able to take out these enemies really easily and... Even with switching the style, you'll get an additional amount of that damage. And I'll be doing a video in the coming future that will be explaining a deep dive on how to utilize the power sword to the maximum of its ability. I try to integrate it into this video. I've given a little bit of information, but there is a lot more that I could go through and it'll more than likely take up too much time in order to properly integrate it into this video as well. So hit that subscribe button. We'll have that coming out tomorrow to give you a little bit more of tips on top of what we already have within this video. Alright, when it comes down to the perk tree, you won't need to have this character max leveled in order to get the most benefit out of this build. Early on, you should actually be able to maintain yourself quite well, especially even by just the point of level 8. You'll need only a few more nodes in order to really get the most DPS out of this. But beyond that, you should be an absolute tank. You should be able to capitalize on a lot of the tankiness of this build. The first 8 row is probably one of the better first rows that you'll find out of most of the classes. Considering you'll get a little bit of damage, a little bit of tankiness, and you'll get the capability of being able to revive your teammates instantly by just dropping a banner on top of them. And anytime that you actually end up depleting all of your armor, you'll drop a shock grenade on top of them. So you should start to notice that you're getting even more powerful pretty quickly on. But by the time you make it all the way to about the midpoint of the second row, you're going to almost have just about everything that you really need to get the most out of this build and start pushing into the harder difficulties with relative ease. And don't be fearful to possibly just jump a little bit ahead, even if you're like two levels under the recommended. Sometimes with the bulwark, if you know how to play it right, you should be able to push in and kind of power level yourself and kind of quicken up the pace to moving through those ranks and getting those unlocks even faster and possibly even just carrying your teammates. But starting off first with the first core, we're going to be working with Intimidating Aura. This is a perfectly timed parry deals an area of effect damage within a five meter radius. This is going to help us out when we're knee deep in some of those crowds, especially if we've got some of those smaller units around us while we're trying to face tank one of those elites. We'll be able to hit some of those perfect parries blow back a little bit of damage towards everybody it's going to blow them back as well cause a little bit of stagger and if you have a group of elite enemies in front of you this is something that can also push them back at the same time and give you a little bit of breathing room to wait for that next parry opportunity or get some of those strikes in to deal a little bit of that damage working towards that finisher on one of those elite units but this is going to come in handy in more than a few different situations and really give you that capability of pushing things back and being able to maintain that health over time and maintain a little bit of a breathing distance from most of the enemies if you're knee deep in some of those crowds. Coming up right after that, we've got Shock and Awe. Enemies in a Shock area take 25% more damage. This is going to be paired with our third core, which is going to be Defensive Advantage. Anytime we have a perfectly timed parry, it creates a Shock area for 5 seconds. This is on a cooldown of 30 seconds. So each time that we're having one of those perfect parries, we're having one of these drop every 30 seconds. And that way we can capitalize not only on having that drop down below us while we're 
stun locking some of these enemies, especially with the perfect parry area of effect. But on top of that, they're taking an additional 25% more damage and any other unit that may be around us while we're in the middle of that is also going to be taking 25% more damage, including from the shock area itself. So this is one of those moments where we're kind of triple dipping on some of the damage, not only are our light strikes and our heavy strikes dealing the damage, but we're also gaining more damage on top of that, on top of the ramping up from the swords, light attack combos going up, and the area of effect damage that's coming in. Coming up right after that, when it comes down to the team perk, we're going to go with Advanced Conditioning. Contested Health fades 50% more slowly for all squad members. This is just going to be one of those moments where we get a little bit of that healer aspect to this build for all of our teammates, giving everybody a little bit more time to be able to get that Contested Health back, giving them more time to be able to get one of those finishers in or possibly a gun strike in order to gain that health back. And it's going to benefit us greatly. There are times where this can actually end up hugely benefiting us and maintaining a large amount of health over the course of some of those ruthless matches. Now coming up to our first gear slot, I would not suggest using rapid regeneration. If you only have the first node, stay on concussive force with the shield bash deals more damage up until you get the very bottom one, which is focus strength, because there's no reason you would want 30 or 300 percent faster if you're going to reduce the duration of your banner by five seconds. The banner is already replenishing that armor fast enough to be very beneficial for you and the team. Having it 300 percent faster is just going to be a little bit overkill more than likely, but you'd much rather just have that five additional seconds to be able to maintain in that and clear through some of those crowds than just have that 300 percent faster because the armor can go within a second and that 300 percent faster isn't going to be the thing that saves you. That five seconds additional was more than likely going to be the thing that ends up saving you in the long run. But the node we want for this is going to be the focus strength. This is with our shield bash. If you're holding L1 or whatever your defensive button is, you'll have that shield in front of you. And then all you'll need to do is hit R1 in order to bash forward towards enemies. With focus strength, the shield bash is going to knock back enemies and make them lose control for a longer period of time. This is perfect for when you're basically pushing towards some of those chaos enemies and that way you can kind of knock them back before taking a swing as with them using their weapons or guns you'll have moments where they'll be able to strike you a couple of times before your sword can actually hit them and then knock them back so with the shield bash you'll actually be able to knock them back and then be able to swing without taking damage in those moments even better with this as well as you can use this towards the smaller units on the chaos enemy team where they have the shields themselves and you'll be able to push them back and down onto the ground and immediately have the capability of causing a gun strike to get some of that contested health back and those armor plates. So this is going to work out in your favor, especially against the chaos enemies, but it can also be beneficial against the Tyranid as well. And when it comes down to the second gear slot, purity of purpose is one of those that some other people may not think is that great. It's not exactly doing that great of amount of damage, but it's still something that can deal damage over time and it can be hitting every one of the enemies within the banner's range. I've used this probably for the entirety of leveling this and it's really not that bad. It's not something that truly benefits you in the long run, but if you're not using shield bash, this is more than likely going to be the better option for you. But if you are using shield bash quite often, Merciless Resolve, especially if you haven't leveled all the way to the point where you can get the third slot, after a shield bash, you do not lose control upon taking heavy hits and you cannot be knocked back. This can be beneficial with just kind of bashing some of those elite units, especially if you have other elite units around. That way you can consistently be able to swing and not get staggered back and not have some of your strikes be able to get interrupted. This can be beneficial, and especially if you're just utilizing an entire build around just revolving around that shield bash, it can be pretty powerful. But the point that we really want is Invigorating Icon, which is going to give us the capability of when our banner is activated, all squad members will regain maximum contested health. Now they will need to get to the banner itself in order to get that maximum contested health. As if you may not have noticed before, anytime we activate the banner, we immediately have a full bar of contested health, no matter what health we have. So if we can quickly get a gun strike in or possibly get a finisher, we'll immediately back, be back. Blah will immediately be back up to full health and now we can give that capability to our teammates as well so if they're struggling with their health overall and you have that banner capability you have a few enemies that are already possibly weakened this can be one of those moments where you can be that type of healer build that ends up saving the team and giving them a little bit more of that breathing room when it comes down to their overall health pool. And when it comes to the third gear slot, I go with Rejuvenating Effect. When the banner is activated, it revives incapacitated squad members within its area of effect. This has come in handy in more than a few different instances. If there's a lot of enemies around and somebody does go down, especially if they were in the middle of a crowd, a lot of elite units, a lot of ranged units, 
being able to run over and just drop down that banner and be able to res them and then start striking those enemies is a whole lot easier than taking the time to possibly gamble whether or not you can pick them up or trying to clear that crowd before they end up bleeding out. This can be pretty beneficial and it's just one of those moments that could end up being the lifesaver for a team, especially if two people go down. This is something that could benefit you and more than likely save one of those runs. And when it comes down to the signature perk, I go with Defensive Mastery. A perfectly timed parry instantly incapacitates a Majoris or Extremist level enemy. This means any one of your elites, the first time that you parry them, you will instantly put them into the state of being able to push them into a finisher and just completely eliminate them. And that means also for Extremist enemies. So any one of those enemies like the Lictor, the Ravener, the thing that's like this snake that comes up out of the ground, or even the Scarab Occultic Terminator, those as well, if you get the capability of being able to perfectly time parry them, and the Lesser Sorcerer, the guy with the eyeballs that's moving around, if you do have the capability of being able to parry them, if you have this on cooldown, you will instantly be able to delete them. I've had this happen more often with the Lictor and the Ravenor than I have had it with the Terminator or the Chaos units, but it is extremely nice to have one of those moments where you just perfectly parry one of their moves, any of their moves that you can actually parry, and just instantly put them into that state of going into the finisher. And it can save you a lot of time, save you a good bit of health, as we all know that those can be pretty frustrating to deal with at times, especially the Lictor that's moving fastly around some of your teammates, even just dwindling some of their armor and health. They sometimes can just straight up bully you, along with that Ravenor, that little snake creature. It can be quite frustrating. But being able to have that moment to just be able to just instantly delete them is quite satisfying. But at the same time, since the whole build is around perfectly timed parry, having that capability of immediately being able to take out one of those elite units as soon as we walk into a crowd can mean the difference between just churning through that as quickly as possible and taking a minimal amount of damage and just making sure that we instantly have the capability of moving forward towards that next target rather than taking our time trying to face tank three units let's take out one immediately and then just work against two and the survivability and the odds go up in our favor now if you haven't leveled up to this point the emergency countermeasure is one that is going to benefit us where when your armor is depleted a reserve shock grenade automatically detonates at your position one thing that i'm not sure is whether or not this gets affected by the shock and off it does create a shock area if any one of the grenades we throw out does throw at that shock area. I've tried to look into whether or not this is actually getting a 25% increase of damage, but it's hard to judge without the damage numbers whether or not we're actually getting a benefit of 25% more from shock grenades. So I don't know whether or not even this shock grenade, if not the ones that we pick up in game, end up getting benefited from shock and all. But at the end of the day, it's still an additional source of that damage output and you really can't go wrong with it, especially if you've just had all of your armor depleted. This will stun lock some of those enemies for a brief moment and get a little bit of damage in and give you the capability of just moving out from that moment and hopefully having a little bit of breathing room. So if you're not a big fan of the defensive mastery and you're not getting much use out of taking out some of the extremist units, then more than likely this will probably be the better option for you. But for me personally, I just love the capability of constantly being able to just one tap some of these enemy units by just using that perfectly timed parry. And it just synergizes really well with the build as every two minutes means that I've got about 20 enemies for the entire match that are instantly going to be taken away. And the amount of times it's been utilized against an extremist unit and made things a much smoother experience has been very beneficial for me. But that's going to be the build in a nutshell. The whole thing is going to center around the perfectly timed parry. And as long as you have the fencing quality for the defense on your melee weapon, it's going to extend that opening for that timing window to block some of those. One thing that I will say when it comes down to the tips as to when to get that perfectly timed parry, as soon as you see that blue circle, try and just hit that button immediately. That's probably the best timing window that you can get it done. Sometimes you will still get it done, even if you do it a little bit delayed. But there have been times where I've had it basically do the perfectly timed parry. I still get everything associated with it, even the area of effect damage, but I even get hit by it at the same time, as well as being host. And sometimes I feel like this is a bit of lag being integrated in that. The matchmaking hasn't been great. The servers haven't been great. So there may be certain instances where you still get the perfectly timed parry, but you still get hit at the same time. So it can be a little bit frustrating. And especially if you're queuing up with other people, if you've got a bit of lag, this can hurt you a little bit but you'll have to play around with that timing window in those certain instances. 
But beyond that point, when it comes to facing off with the chaos units, I have to stress that utilize your shield. A lot of times try to push forward and then use the shield bash and then start striking them. More than likely, this is going to be the opportunity that's going to give you the capability of juggling them and then getting close enough to not take that damage, but also be able to work towards them striking you with something that is parryable. Sometimes you may even just want to like sit a little bit of a distance away from them holding the shield and they'll start to jet forward. And that's going to be another opportunity for you to parry them sometimes the chaos units can be a little bit more frustrating to deal with with this type of class but it still has the tankiness and the capabilities of getting it done you just have to play a little bit more patiently with them when it comes to the tyranid it is perfect for them you're going to be just face rolling them the only one that's a little bit irritating to deal with is the one with the whip you will need to perfectly time this every time that they do end up having the blue circle and there's slinging their whip out be prepared to hit that parry button a second time just after you perfectly parry the first one as you're going to need to also parry the second strike in order to get that gun strike on them and this is something that ends up getting a double area of effect strike as well as giving you more opportunities for just dealing that damage outward towards the shock area so do keep that in mind that's probably one of the more tricky ones to actually get around but when it comes down to the dual blade or any one of the range type of elite units those are going to be very easy every time that you see that blue circle just immediately hit that parry button and more than likely as long as you have that fencing defense on your sword you're going to be able to easily perfectly time those parries and start destroying and moving through those crowds of elites and don't forget that it's going to be any strike against you that doesn't have the red circle that can be parried as well. You can perfectly parry even the smaller units that may be striking you. So if you see them rear back and about to strike, you can also perfectly parry them as well as causing the shock area from that as well as the damaged area of effect or explosive area of effect from that as well and on top of that anytime especially against those enemy types that have the dual blades not all of their strikes are going to have that blue circle so if you see them going in for a strike try and hit that one and deflect that one and the dual blade if he is striking without the blue circle he also has one where you will need a secondary parry right after the first one in order to get that gun strike similar to the one with the whip but it's a lot more easily done with that one and it's a lot more visually easy to see when to actually parry that one it's an interesting play style it's one that may not be for everybody but it is survivability it is tanky and it is one that can destroy a lot of different enemy types and be able to bully them push them into corners and if you're working with a heavy and a sniper or possibly a heavy a vanguard heavy and a tactical you know, you're going to be basically mulching through those crowds very easily. And do remind yourself to constantly put the sword into the power style. As long as you have that blue glow on your sword, you're going to be in the power style. If you put it into speed style, you won't have the same type of staggering quality towards those elite enemies. Anytime they're using power style, every one of your light attacks is capable of juggling some of those elite units. They will have some bounce back moments where after about three strikes, they'll be able to strike against you in those moments. And that's when you're going to have your parry window opportunity. But you'll be able to capitalize on making sure that they can't deal damage pushing them back possibly pushing multiples of them back as well staggering them getting that damage output and then waiting for that parry opportunity and getting that heavy strike in to cause them to deal less damage over time and finish them off rather quickly and making minimal opportunity for them dealing damage towards your teammates so your teammates can assess the situation of different enemy pockets that may be surrounding the area or at least just giving them some breathing room so they can deal with these smaller crowds while you try to aggro all of the heavier units. But that's going to be the best loadout slash build for the Bulwark right there. I'll be working on some more of these builds in the coming future. So hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of this content in the future. Let me know down in the comments below what's your favorite class out there. Have you been using the Bulwark recently? I know I've had uh, more than a few problems with trying to join into some of these matches. And other people are using the Bulwark more often these days. So I'm having to switch over. But thankfully now that I've got this max level I can start working on some of the other classes. And start working on some of these other builds. As the Bulwark's not the only one that's going to be fun in this and not the only one that does have great survivability. I believe the Assault class is the only one I'm just not having a good time with, but every one of the other ones has been an interesting journey, and I'm having a good time with it. And if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming daily. And on that note, have a good one.